What's going on, everybody? Today, we have got Kaiju Tactic number six, which this is probably one of my favorite ones that I have made because it reminds me a lot of a tactic that I made last year. This is a 4 2 4 that is kind of a zigzag, a reverse zigzag of something that I did last year. And it is absolutely ridiculously good once again. So, if you end up wanting to give this tactic a go for yourselves, I'll be linking my Discord down below in the description. That's where you're going to be able to download the tactic from, from the download section of the Discord. But now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So, today's tactic ended up testing with Portugal as well as FC Porto. FC Porto is actually the club that I ended up utilizing this sort of tactic with a lot last year. And it was absolutely broken last year, and I'm pretty sure I've done it again this year. Now, with Portugal, I basically wanted to make sure that I could help them be their creative selves and help Ronaldo get back to his goal-scoring ways, because unfortunately they weren't really up to that at the Euros this year, so I ended up getting them back to that level, and they ended up winning the Euros. And what's even better is they didn't lose a single game or draw. They won every single game doing an invincible Euro run. They ended up beating Georgia, Czechia, Turkey, Croatia, Austria, Slovakia, and France in the final. And as we can see from the names over here, Ronaldo scored in every game except in the game against Slovakia, which was the biggest scare as they only beat them 1-0. But Ronaldo got back to his goal scoring ways from playing this type of system. I mean, everyone was dominant within this system as well. And when it comes to how FC Porto did, well, they ended up winning a triple. And they could have done a quintuple, which is actually what this tactic helped me do last year with them. They ended up winning the league on 90 points, got to a semi-final of the Champions League, which last year when I did the quintuple, I instead won the Europa League. The They won the FA Cup version in Portugal, the Taca de Portugal Picard, they ended up winning that. Semi-final of the Lions Cup, which is like their Carabao Cup. And then they won the Super Cup as well, which is like the Community Shield. And they did very well. I will definitely take that trouble because they darn near played every single game possible and available to them. So they were definitely tired and did all that they could and still had an absolutely spectacular season. And that was backed up by not only leading the league in goals by a fair margin, but also being the top scoring team in the Champions League, even though they went out in the semis. Now, when it comes to player production levels, gonna have to show you guys that of FC Porto because it includes friendlies with the Portuguese national team, but we saw, I mean, some players did absolutely incredible, like Ronaldo, for example. But when it comes to Porto, it is pretty evenly distributed, and that is what I love about playing this style. Everyone's gonna contribute, whether it is goals or assists. Gaino ended up leading the way with 31 goals. He was one of the wingers. Evan Nelson with 21. Tony Martinez with 19. Francisco Cancesau, he ended up having 15, which that surprised me big time. Medi Taremi with 15, and Pepe had 12. That's Pepe the winger, not Pepe the center back, by the way. Then assist-wise, Cancesau, he had 27 assists, which was awesome. He was mainly playing as a right winger. He would play in the left wing as well sometimes, though. Gaino with 15. Draw Mario with 13. He was one of the wingbacks. Wendell, also one of those wingbacks, he had 11. Evan Nelson with 10. And Pepe, once again, the winger, not the center back, he also had 10. But when it comes to this tactic, being that I'm ranting and raving about how good it is and what it's done for me in the past especially, how does it line up and how different is it from my previous version? So, here it is. This is the asymmetric 424. It is like a zigzag. Last year, it went this way in a zigzag. This year, it is this way. In a zigzag and i do use some different roles as well i'm pretty sure the front four is the exact same advance forward pressing forward and then two inverted wingers however the midfield duo is definitely different central midfielder this time with a segunda volante that is the same from last year though then i use an inverted wing back this year with a wing back two ball playing defenders, and a sweep keeper. Now, what I love about this tactic is the versatility of it. And what everyone is able to do, it leads to everyone contributing as we saw numbers wise. You have that advance forward up top. This pressing forward is on support. And what I love about the pressing forward, specifically on support, 
is that yes, he will contribute in goals as we saw at Mr. Tony Martinez. Sometimes he led the way in goals and testing, but he will also be defensive. I have seen the player, especially last year, them come all the way down to our half over here, win the ball, move the ball off, go on a run, and then go score a goal. The pressing forward on support is broken in a system like this, and you'll definitely reap the benefits of it. The inverted wing, the inverted wingers, there we go, not inverted wing backs, there is one. But the inverted wingers, they end up cutting inside. They're not like inside forwards, so they will set a tiny bit deeper. The central midfielder comes up with the segundo volante as well. And with that segundo volante and the pressing forward with how they drop, they can be interchanged. Or this pressing forward will go out here, inverted winger here. So going to Volante here, inverted winger here. This is a very versatile kind of little triangle here of roles with the pressing forward, inverted winger, and Segunda Volante. So it's usually going to be like this though. But then you have that wing back coming up, supplying with, and then the inverted wing back is going to be right around here with these ball playing defenders. And this inverted winger knows, okay, sometimes they need to stay out wide, sometimes they cut in, and if it wants to cut in, Central midfielder can come out here and play this area as well, as I do instruct it to move into the channels. And this is kind of how it lines up. It does look a little bit lopsided on this right side due to that wing back, but it is very, very good and very, very broken. And speaking of it being very, very broken, there is one perfect example of it. So they ended up having to play Barcelona, meaning F FC Porto had to play Barcelona. Within the round of 16, they were down 4-2 in the first leg, and they had to go back to the Dragao, which that is their stadium, and pull off an absolute miracle to force extra time, potentially, or even win at regulation, and move on to the quarterfinals. Because keep in mind, on this run, they got to the semis. They did that in drastic fashion. They ended up beating them 5-0. It was absolutely ridiculous, so take a look. And it now within the 3D match engine. So there we have a perfect example of how darn good this tactic can be because on paper, Barcelona, far better and prestigious club than FC Porto, but FC Porto made them look like a kid's team. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the tactic within FM, go over those player instructions, tactic instructions, all that good stuff. So the tactical file name that you'll be looking for in the download section of the Discord is Gourmet's 424 Kaiju number six. We've got an advanced forward on attack up top with a pressing forward on support. We got two inverted wingers on attack, central midfielder on support, Segundo Volante on support, inverted wing back on support, wing back on support, two ball point defenders on defend, and a sweeper keeper on defend. The advance forward on attack is left as is. That pressing forward on support also left as is. Both inverted wingers on attack have crosses aimed at center and shoot more often. The central midfielder on support crosses aimed at center, roam from position, move into channels and tackle harder. Segundo Volante on support, move into channels and tackle harder. The inverted wing back is left as is. The wing back on support has crossed more often and crosses aimed at center. Both ball point defenders on defend are left as is. And that sweep keeper on defend also left untouched. When it comes to the mentality, I think using it on attack is going to get the most out of it. However, you can use positive, be a little bit safer, still get quite a bit out of it. But last year when I was using this tactic, I used it quite a bit on balance. It still did a very, very good job. But if you want the most attacking output out of this tactic, go attacking or positive. If you want to play it a little bit safer, make sure that you aren't conceding a whole lot of goals and that you're kind of just safe 
go balanced or positive. So when we are in possession of the ball, we have fairly narrow attacking width. We're going to be playing the ball out from the defense and looking for the underlap on the left and the right. Because we're going to be looking for those underlaps from the central midfielder, the segundo volante, the inverted wingback, and those inverted wingers. We're going to be working that ball into the box and using little crosses in the final third with shorter passing directness and slightly higher tempo. When in transition, we counter press and counter, distribute quickly to the fullbacks and center backs by rolling the ball out. And once out of possession, we have a high press line of engagement, higher defensive line, and more often trigger press. When it comes to the level of ability needed to play this type of tactic, I think you can use it with just about anyone, but you will definitely, definitely get the most out of it with a mid table to elite level type side. If you are a relegation type side or a newly promoted side, you're definitely gonna be able to do some damage with this, but you'll for sure have to kind of build up to a level like a Portugal, like a FC Porto, to really kind of overachieve with this type of tactic. Because as we all know, FC Porto, absolutely fantastic club, but them getting to a semifinal of the Champions League, that is an unreal run right there. And when it comes to changes to the tactic, there is really only one tweak that I would make. That tweak is on the pressing forward on support. If you were down late and you need a goal, go ahead and switch that pressing forward to a pressing forward on attack, or switch them to an advance forward on attack those are the only, that's really the only change that you need to make because the duo of an advanced forward on attack with a pressing forward on support is absolutely broken so i don't think you'll really need to make that change all too often but if you do want to make a change like that that is definitely what i would suggest for you but all in all this tactic absolutely broken highly highly suggest giving it a go well there we have it if you guys did enjoy today's video and wish to give this tactic a go for yourselves be linking my Discord down below in the description. That's where you're going to be able to download the tactic from within the download section of the Discord. But if you did happen to enjoy today's video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing is 100% free, so why not hit that sub button? Right now on screen, will be popping up one of my most recent Kaiju Tactic videos that can definitely help turn your side into a world beater, so why not give it a watch? Well, until next time, everyone, have a good one. Bye-bye.